Okay, let's go through one more example here in VBA Basics before the end of the chapter. So hopefully you've seen the previous two videos where we showed you how to uh, create variables in memory using the dim statement as well as use cells on a page as name storage locations. So I'm going to go back to my code here. Uh, actually, I think I need to Alt F11 and open it back up. And these are the two functions we created in previous videos. I'm going to go down and make a new one now. Instead uh, of dealing with text, I want to create a calculator. So let's do this. Let's uh, start by making it in memory, and then we'll create it on a, on a page. So let's make sub calc, and we're going to calculate some type of total. So let's create a couple of variables, dim uh, n1. This time, we don't want it as a string. We want it as a number. So in particular, whole numbers are referred to as integers. I'm also going to dim n2 as an integer. So just so you know, I can combine some of these onto the same line. I can save this dim statement, and I can put n1 as integer, n2 as integer. One thing that's important to remember, though, is I have to continue to use the as integer every time. If I leave that off, it's going to create n2 as something called an object, which is the biggest uh, possible variable type. Um, if you're watching this video as part of my class, you'll remember that different types of variables take up different amounts of space in memory. So if we have something that's going to be a number, we want to make sure we declare it as an integer so that it uses only the smallest amount of memory possible to keep our functions and subs running as fast as possible. So, two numbers. Let's uh, now add these numbers together. We're going to have something called a total. Let's dim total as an integer as well. And we're going to now perform some processing and say n1, oops, excuse me. We're going to say total equals n1 plus n2. And then we're going to print that total out. Uh, let's start by putting it in the message box. What do I put here? See if you can remember. I don't put the actual total or n1 plus n2 again. I'm going to put the variable total. Although there are other ways of doing this to save time. I want to put everything on one line to make it as easy as possible. So what haven't we done yet? Think about it for a moment. If we hit F8, notice our locals window recognizes that we have three variables, n1, 2, and, and total. No value at this point. If I go to uh, hit F8 again, it goes to my first line of processing and says total equals n1 plus n2. Well, those numbers are both 0. Therefore, after I process this line, total is still equal to 0. What I need to do is give this, oh, now it, actually let's finish this function, F8 and it prints out 0 because that because that's what total is. So I need some way of giving n1 and n2 a value. Now I could come and do that right here in the code and say, okay, n1 equals 1,234, n2 equals something else. Oops. And then I can go ahead and process this. Stop, F8. Notice in memory, n1 was just assigned the value of 1, 2, 3, 4. 987. Now they're added together as total 2221. And it's going to message box out 2221. What's more likely is you're going to have some values on a worksheet that you need to total up. So let's say that we are a manager and we are, um, let's see here, we're selling donuts and we have a price and a quantity. Let's say someone uh, is going to order, let's give you a border here. All borders, total, let's make this one a nice thick border. All right, so we're making a calculator for a storefront. We're going to put the quantity ordered in here. The price is going to be, uh, I don't know, a dollar a donut. Um, and we want to print out the total. So let's set N1 and N2 by getting these values off the page. So. Remember previously where we referred to a cell as a range with a reference dot value, and that's how we grabbed the value out of a cell. And using an assignment statement, which is where we use the equal sign, we assigned that cell the value of a variable n, where n was Homer Simpson. We're going to do something similar down here, but instead of assigning a cell a value, we're going to assign a variable a value from a cell. So in particular, we want n1 to equal the value in B5. 
So no problem, we put B5 right here. N2 is gonna be the value next to it, which would be C5. Now the total for the donuts is not gonna simply be the quantity times plus the price, it's gonna be the quantity times the price. And then we're going to message box. Well, actually, instead of message boxing at the total, which we could do, let's go ahead and debug and test it right now. So F8 to go into debug mode. F8 again to move to the next line. And notice it has successfully grabbed the value of 10 and stored it in N1. Here was 10 in B5. Just like this line said, take the value from B5 and store it in N1. That's happened now. Hit 8. Now notice the value in, in C5 has been stored in N2. Now we're going to do the processing. Total has been calculated, N1 times N2, F8. Now it message boxes out the total. Instead of message boxing, let's put the total into that cell in D5. How would we do that? See if you can pause this video and figure that out on your own with what you know. Okay, how'd you do? Hopefully you realize that with an assignment statement, it works in both directions. Up here, we assigned to a cell. Remember, whatever with an assignment statement, whatever's on the left-hand side of the equal sign is changed to whatever's on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So previously, we changed the cell value to the value of a variable. Whereas down here, we changed the value of the variable to what was in the cell value. Well, now we're gonna go and reverse it again. Now the value of a cell is going to be equal to a variable. Which variable in particular? It's going to be equal to total. So I'm going to stop that sub, end it. Let's run it again. All right, we assign N1, N2, perform the processing. Now notice if I stop right there, still no total here. That's because the yellow highlights the line that's about to be processed that hasn't been processed yet. So hit F8 again. Now, that line right there should have assigned a 10 into cell C5, which is, there we go. Oh, I used the wrong reference. I should have put it in D5. I just changed price to $10 a donut. You probably caught that as we were going along, and I totally missed it. No problem. Let's change it to D5. Quick question, if I leave things as they are, what is D5 going to be now? Hopefully you said $100. Let me hit stop, F8, F8. Notice that C5, instead of being one, is changed to 10 because I accidentally outputted my 10 to the wrong cell last time. Now the total is $100 and it should put 100 in D5, which is exactly what it did. All right, to make this really useful, let's put this or attach this to a button like you did in the macros section. I'm going to come back here to Excel I'm going to, oh, sorry, not that insert. Although I could do this. I could make a, a shape or something like that, a button. But instead, I'm going to go to my developer tab. I'm going to insert a form control button, which allows me to draw out a button. And we'll call this, uh, well, first we get this little window here that says, which macro have you made that you want to assign to this button? Well, we want calc. That's the one we just wrote. Hit OK. It draws a great big button. It's definitely a big button. Let's call this calculate total. Okay, let's put some stuff in here. One, two dollars a donut. Calc total. Oh, I was still in break mode. I had to get out of that first. Actually, I'm glad this happened because this is gonna, you're gonna run into this a lot too. Can't ca execute in break mode because I was in the middle of debugging before. I'm gonna hit okay go back and stop break mode. Get out of that. And now my calculate will work fine. So I can change this to anything, calculate total. You may be wondering, uh, what about decimals or currency? We're not likely to uh, charge even integers for every donut. No problem. Let's change one two from an integer to a, whoops, excuse me, to a single. A single allows decimal places. And that means our total is also going to have to be a single to allow decimal places as well. However, our integer, our N1, our quantity will remain an integer because you can't sell half of donuts. So let's go back to here and let's change the price to 
0.5. Calculate total. There we go. All right, that'll do it for this video. Uh, make sure you've practiced these things before class next time.